Welcome to a Labor Day Monday. It was a holiday weekend at the box office and the newest offering from Marvel definitely sparked some life back into it. Absolutely decimating all other competitors, the newest superhero origin story appeared the perfect start to Marvel Phase 4. Yes, I know there were two prior Phase 4 movies, but this is the first not centering around the events of previous phases. So is post-Avengers Endgame Marvel still bringing the fun? Here's a look at Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Our movie begins with Sean and his best friend Katie. They are valets who like to party at night and live a boring life. That is, until one day, they are attacked on a bus for a pendant Sean is wearing. Much to Katie's surprise, Sean is a martial arts master and manages to wow everyone on the bus despite the carnage that is ensuing. The thugs make off with his pendant, and then Sean enlightens Katie of his backstory. Sean is actually Shang-Chi. His father possesses ten rings that gave him power and immortality that he has used in a corrupt way for thousands of years. That was until he met Shang's mother, and he put the rings away to grow old with his family. Unfortunately, Shang's mother was murdered and caused his father to don the rings yet again to get revenge. He spent the next years brutally training Shang to be an indestructible assassin. After being sent on his first hit at age 14, Shang ran away, changed his name, and tried to live a new life. Back to present day, Shang and Katie head out to warn his sister that their father is coming. The siblings have some animosity towards each other, but all is short-lived when their father's army shows up, and although they put up a fight, Daddy Chi shows up and takes them back to his compound. As the movie progresses, we see that the pendants each sibling had opened a map to their mother's original magic birthplace. Their father believes she isn't dead, but has been taken prisoner back there, and he wants their help to overrun the magical land and free her. The siblings escape and beat their father there for a final showdown that sets father versus son, but more importantly, evil versus humanity. Shang has to learn his true powers, not only to stop his father, but to save the world as well. So, what to say about this one? First off, the first hour and 40 minutes are great. Beautiful choreography and visuals make for exciting fight scenes reminiscent of well-known kung fu movies. The 20-minute climatic final fight is a messy array of CGI that makes it very hard to see what's even going on. But then it ends again on a solid 10 minutes and goes into some great post-credit material. I know Marvel always has that comic relief character going on, and I cringed when I saw that this time it was going to be Aquafina because she tends to get on my nerves just a little. There are times in this movie where she goes to that overboard level, but for the most part, I actually enjoyed her in the role. Of course, we get some other Marvel cameos, but there is one really surprising one. They bring back a very annoying character from a past movie that we had all but forgotten about, but they actually make him extremely likable and funny in this one. To be honest, I really haven't been that excited about Phase 4 from Marvel. The new Spider-Man looks promising, but I really just didn't want to learn all these new characters. But I'll tell you what, this was one of the better origin stories that they've done, and other than that, one small stint during the end, the movie is a lot of fun to watch. This has been your Monday Movie Musing. Back to you.